All right, I'm doing this video uh, for a video request by a viewer of mine named Lord Silver ESP um, in my maintenance in the high point video he I, I suggest that you do a, a full detail strip cleaning and uh, he asked if I could do a, a video showing uh, the procedures on how to do that and so you know how I am um, I try to comment on everybody's uh, views you know I'm not um, too good uh, should we say to uh, chat back and forth with you guys like some of the the, the bigger uh, YouTube channel guys um, and on that note um, there's a couple of viewers or subscribers of mine that's been loyal um, one of his one of them is mega bait 56 and then there's another uh, guy I can't remember uh, he don't comment that much but uh, mega bait mega bait 56 um, he's been following my channel for a really long time and I feel terrible because um, I, for whatever reason I cannot comment back on his or reply back on his comments um, and I know I'm doing it off my phone um, majority of the times you know uh, answering comments and stuff but uh, you know I answer tons of comments all the time and and for some reason every time he comments I cannot reply back so uh, I don't know if maybe there's something you need to do with with your channel on why you're I can't I, I don't know because it's not on my end um, because like I said I comment on a lot of people's stuff so I don't want you to think that I just don't comment back to you or, or, or that I'm that guy because I'm not um, and for for you, you know, Megabait56, if, you know, in my comments, I put a link up to my Facebook. You know, you're, you know, I encourage you to come over there and, uh, you know, come over there and talk to me. So, let's get going. Uh, I'm going to show you a uh, detail strip. Um, there's going to be a couple items you're going to need to make the job comfortable. Uh, decent Phillips head screwdriver, hammer. And an array of some punches. Um, and, I mean, you can get by without some of this stuff, but this is just stuff that makes the, the job a little easier. So, let's get going. We're going to perform. I have already have, but for video, uh, we'll perform a, a safety check. Um, as you can see, there is nothing in the chamber. Rack it a couple times. I'm going to visually inspect myself. Okay, we are clear. So, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time detailing about getting this thing apart because I did in the last video. Okay, pin. I'm going to set that off to the side. Get the punch out. Okay, at this point, I'm going to be pulling the trigger. I'm going to perform another safety check. Safe direction, dry fire. Um, and how far you have to lean this back, which I'll, I'll do it from this side. Basically, you got to pull it back far enough to get the extractor out of that uh, peephole notch. So once you reach it up out of there, she'll come right up. And out okay now you got your your frame so I'm gonna put that off to the side you got your retainer firing pin spring and firing pin um, this would be the point of putting these in some rubbing alcohol to uh, let all these get clean and dried um, now the only thing left on your frame to um, get out is your extractor here on the side okay um, as you can see right here and when you come over see if I can get a shot of it right in here it's gonna be there's a pin there okay and that's what holds your extractor in how you gotta get that out is you have to push it 
this way to this out to the, up the top because the, the the pin is actually bent up top here and that's what holds the holds the pin in holds retention um, what I use I use a series of two punches this is a punch that is just uh, started out as like a flathead and I just kind of grinded it down um, because if I start out with this punch it's just going to bend it all up um, so that's the kind of downside is the punch that you need to drift it a lot of times they're so skinny that uh, they just bend up so just to get her started okay as you can see pen is coming out and I'm going to hold my finger my thumb over this extractor because it's under spring tension I don't want it going flying everywhere at that point we're just going to give her a couple of little love taps until so she comes out pull pen out pull your punch out you got your pen you can either do one or two things you can either go ahead and pull it on out or leave it in there um, and then from there, your extractor I might not like to come out because I grease them. And spray. Um, I fill them with grease um, just because I don't ever want these these rusting. So I, I will pack I will pack the the spring full of grease. Um, just in case under conditions, uh, weather, water, uh, any kind of salt that's in the air or anything like that. Uh, if I pack them full of grease, uh, I know they're not going to. And which I'm glad I took this apart because it actually could use a little bit more. And I will touch on what this is. So, you know, I, I pack them full of grease. Um, at this point, you know, you would want to get something in here and clean out this channel. Uh, clean the breech face really good. Um, also, clean your extractor off really good, which I'm going to go ahead and do since I have this all out. And like I said, mine's not too much dirty because I, I keep up on, on mine. So, um, to assemble your spring. As you can see it's kind of a round spot there in that slot you're going to drop your spring back in you're going to line your extractor back up and if you can tell the spring is bent okay the bent side goes up top and I always put the, the bend bending back this way so Try and get this, and then I just put you put spring tension up, push down on the extractor till you feel it uh, go in, and then from there um, I just use a one of my flat overhead my flat oversized punches, and I'm just going to give her some love taps till you get her flush down in there. And you know, obviously, you don't want a whole lot poking out here. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's how you would do your slide. So now we're gonna move on to the frame. Okay, so you're gonna remove your recoil spring. And what you would do from this point is we need to remove this grip panel. You screw, go ahead, just kind of pry up on your, your grip. Um, just for not losing it and for film I'm just gonna put my screw back in there set that off to the side what you're gonna have here at this point is your cam your trigger bar your uh, mag catch spring and if you didn't take it out you would have your uh, mag disconnect so pull your spring out set it off to the side uh, from this point you got your sear assembly right here okay that is attached to your your cam arm um, but it's basically just under tension is what's holding it so 
press downward on your your cam or your sear I'm sorry and then just remove that okay set that off to the side now you can release spring tension on this you can pull that out and you can see mine's all greased up uh, it helps with the trigger pull um, and from this point I would take it upside down give her a couple taps and this is what you're going to see happen you're going to see this little thing okay this is attached to your uh, counterweight there's a little slot here on the side you just pull it out and as you've seen the counterweight just fell out the bottom now what you have here on this channel is I think they call it a sear block and spring and then that comes out so we're just going to set that off to the side and like I said if it helps you put the put the parts back kind of lay them on the table in the order that it they came out uh, from this point now we need to remove this grip panel screw flip your safety up, upward, remove your grip, I'm going to put my screw back in, your safety just comes out, nothing holding it in. Now at this point, uh, your mag button is holding this in. Sometimes you can get lucky. Sometimes you can get lucky and they'll just come right off. Sometimes you got to get something underneath there and just kind of wedge it up. Uh, you got your button. At um, this point, take note on how this spring is attached on both sides. So take a mental picture of that. Uh, actually, if you want to take a physical picture of it, I mean, do that. It's kind of important that this goes back in uh, the same way. And you just remove it okay so you got that now from this point your mag catch is still in there uh, you can just simply push it through to the other side and she will just come right on out okay that is basically right there that is a detail strip cleaning on what I was referring to that needs to get done um, every thousand or I'm sorry 500 to a thousand rounds put through the gun um, and the reason why I say that is because the way your your groove your firing pin channel is wide open like that um, you're gonna when you first break these guns in you're gonna have a lot of metal shavings uh, from where everything is getting broken in and what it does is it just blasts it right down through here so all this down in here is just gonna be filled with metal shavings and just just crud um, from this point you know if you really wanted to you got your big pin and your small pin um, you know you could drift those out and remove the barrel um, I do that when I polish them um, if you do do that and you go when you go to put this side back in um, you're going to want to hit this down as far as you can to the point where this don't move no more and then you'll have to come back over to this side and just give it a tap, check it, give it a tap, check it until this finally breaks loose to where it moves freely. Uh, you don't want this hammer down so tight that this don't move, but then also on the same note, you don't want this out so bad that this metal part here is going to rub the inside of your slide. So there's kind of a sweet spot, so you just got to play with it until you just get this to break free. Um, from this point, you know, um, you know, you can get your brush down in here because you're going to get a lot of crap back here behind your trigger um, from where all the gunpowder is blowing down, downward. Uh, it's, it's finding a place to go, so all the gunpowder is just going to go down all the nicks and crannies in which a lot of it will get down in here. Um, also, getting all this out, cleaning it with Q-tips and patches and stuff to get all the crud out of there. Now there is a particular way you need to put this back together. Um, and 
uh, uh, just real quick before we get started because you probably were wondering what was in that grease tube. Uh, this is basically Glock grease. It's a copper anti-seize uh, grease. Um, that's all it is. And, you know, I bought this at uh, O'Reilly's part store. I think I paid like three bucks dude, for this. And, I mean, it's 18, eight ounces of it. Um, and what it does is when you put it like in your rails and you just like Glock does, they put it in their rails. Uh, you put it in your rails and in certain areas that you want. It, it acts like a cutting compound in a way, but not like when I say the word cut, it sounds dramatic, but it's not. It's, it's gonna basically just going to get in there. And it's going to put a little bit of metal and grease in between your metal to metal areas. And it's basically going to lap it out is what it's going to do. So, um... And for you guys that don't like when your gun rattles, you take your, your counterweight here that goes up into your grip on the back side here. Take and run you a little grease down it. Okay. You're going to take your, your grip panel and you're going to run this back down in there all the way. Give her a couple little taps till you see it. So you see it come in through here right there and then you're going to take the l-shape uh, bracket that came out of it and you're going to come in put it through the hole just like that and you're going to lay it down and lay it down in this channel here okay you're going to take your sear block and spring and there's a little pin the sear or the spring has to go underneath of it so you basically push in and down okay and then from there i am going to re-grease my sear because i'm going to use this copper grease to basically uh polish my sear That's kind of why when I was asked if I could do this video, I was like, well, you know, uh, I guess so. Uh, you know, as I need to get this done anyway, since I got this stuff now. And I'm just going to put it just a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple hundred rounds with this stuff in here. I'm sure it's probably going to feel a little gritty at first because, well, it's, it's got copper in it. Um, but once I put some rounds through it um, I'm sure it's going to help uh, once I take it all out so at this point we're going to put our sear back down in uh, also going to put a little bit remove this grease that I had here I'm also going to put a little bit on the back side of this. Okay, and there's no point in being real critical about it because you're just going to run it in there a couple hundred rounds and then remove it. So, okay, um, at this point, this side is uh, virtually done. What I need to do is uh, I need to get my mag catch. Um, another thing you can do is sand the, sand the top of this smooth, uh, but don't polish it if you want to leave it kind of gritty because your magazine actually catches on the top of here. So you don't want it smooth. Um, now, this bottom part here, you can polish this. And what that's going to do is it's going to help your mag go in and also it's going to help when you drop your mag uh, smooth falling, falling out. Um, you're just going to insert it in here. Just like so. Um, your mag spring. Every time I take this apart, I will always grab it. And bend it. Okay, and the reason why I do that is because uh, it's going to keep your mag from dropping free uh, or dropping 
um, I want to call it uh, like catastrophically felon out of your out of your firearm while you're shooting. Um, at this point, I'm going to take my grip panel, put it back in. It's going to be a little tough. It's not going on leg completely flush right now because I bent that spring and it's uh, smashed between the grip and snug out pretty good. Uh, your grip, especially this side, your grip panels, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, you got them in there really tight. Uh, don't over tighten them because you don't want to take a chance of stripping it. Uh, from this side, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my, my spring. Uh, the big looped side is where your mag goes on your mag catch side and that's the reason why they make that big uh, your small hook here uh, it's going to hook in and then you don't twist the spring or anything you just pull it straight down and clip it and then from this point I go ahead and I put my mag button on and at the same time I function test it yeah, just make sure it's working and also by putting pressure you're you're uh, making sure it's on there uh, at this point I'm gonna put my safety in and I'm gonna put it up on safe and the reason why I'm gonna put it up on safe is because it's gonna make put my grip panel on better and then I always I don't know why I always just go ahead and put it down just to hold it there I don't really know why it just kind of makes sense and then from this point You're going to tighten her down. Um, now I need to remove some of this grease that's over. That I don't need on. Um, from this point. From this point, I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to run some oil on the barrel, on the sides on my feed ramp. I'm gonna rub it all, smear it all around. Nice thin coats. Get the, the whole breech face here, or not breech face, but head space. Uh, get all of this back through here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same, same thing, same oil process. Gonna make sure I get it good. Here in the muzzle, sides, straight down the middle, down both slots here. Uh, basically, the whole inside of the slide, I put light thin coats, um, except for, like I said, in the firing pin channel, you do not want any oil or cleaner, anything in your firing pin channel whatsoever. Uh, get a little bit there on the the breech face. Okay. Um, and then if you want, you know, just to protect it, you can uh, you can hit your recoil spring. I wouldn't worry too much about it though. Uh, at this point, we're gonna reassemble. So now we're basically at the field strip level right now. I know. Put my springs back in. Get all this stuff off to the side here. Um, and damn it. A little hard doing it from the side here and trying to give you guys the right angle. So just bear with me. Uh, from this, uh, this point, I lay the slide down. Uh, insert my recoil spring into my frame. Uh, line it all up. Push it back till it drops. I'm gonna come back, lift it up, insert my retainer, make sure that's on there. Line that up, and the pin that we did not lose. Give it a couple of love taps. I always stop before I get to the slide so I don't. Uh, damage my slide. I know it's just a high point we're talking about here, but I take care of all 
my firearms as much as I can. Uh, you know, even though it's a hundred and fifty dollar gun, uh, you know, you think about the hours you had to work to to buy the gun. Okay, and we're even on both sides. Actually, with that Glock grease in there, it don't feel any grit. But what that's going to do is the more there, trigger job, fifty-five dollars, sir. Have a nice day. I'm just playing. Um, but what that's going to do, I'm going to run a couple hundred rounds of that clock grease in there, and that's going to lap the sear and, and everything. And just when I go to remove the, the grease back out, you know, 300 rounds from now, uh, you know, it should be nice and nice and smooth without having to actually uh, mechanically polish it. I don't like uh, mechanically polishing stuff like that because uh, I don't want to change the angles. So, um, yeah, I hope that helped. Um, if you like my videos, hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe come join me on Facebook I got a pretty awesome channel or page over there that's actually going really really good and uh, it's it's a quicker and easier way to have conversations with me personally so thanks for watching uh, if I didn't cover anything on this video again like always leave a message I will comment back uh, or just come over the face or yeah Facebook and uh, hit me up there. And like I said, Mega Bates 56, dude. I, you know, I feel terrible, man. But I, for whatever reason, I cannot reply back. Um, and there's a couple other people out there too. So uh, hopefully you get whatever it is fixed, or just come over to Facebook, dude. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting my channel. Uh, you know, you guys are the reasons why I uh, why I do what I do, man. You know what I mean? So thanks.